Hi, it's becoming extremely difficult and expensive to get displays for our beloved retro gaming machines. If there are tons of solutions out there to convert the signal to newer video standards, they almost all have drawbacks, ranging from poor image quality to excessive price. But mainly they don't have the charm and appeal of old CRT displays. That's why I wanted to attempt an RGB mod on this generic consumer TV found by the e-recycling bin on my way to work. Now, what is RGB mod and why would you want to do that? Well, most CRT TVs have the following input options. An antenna for aerial or cable broadcast which delivers a mediocre signal, a composite input, that yellow connector which is getting slowly phased out, and for the lucky ones, an S-Video or YPBPR connector that had better color and sharpness rendition. Slightly blurry at best, washed out and distorted for others. In fact, all the above signals pretty much suck. Problem is, your computer is generating a nice and pure RGB signal that is then processed and encoded by the modulator so it can be transmitted via one single standard cable. In your TV, the same signal is then decoded back into RGB to control the red, green and blue electron guns from your CRT. The idea here is to bypass the encoding and decoding steps and simply inject pure RGB signals and turn your TV into a computer monitor. Sounds great on paper, but how do you do that? Well, first let's remove the back cover from our TV and analyze its board layout. A quick reminder, there are lethal voltages in your TV. Do it at your own risk, don't forget to discharge the tube. By the way, this is a Toshiba 14AF45C. This mod should work on all the TVs from this series, the 43, 44, 46, etc. It's nice to see every section is labeled. It will make our investigation work easier. I couldn't find any documentation for this Orion chip, but it seems to be a microcontroller for the on-screen display and the various menu options. Now, this chip here is the one processing all the video signals and extracting the RGB to send to the rest of the circuitry. This is the one we need to work on. I found a datasheet for this M61283, always easier when you can find one. Luckily, this chip is already compatible with RGB input on pins 21, 22, and 23. Usually, those are used for on-screen display. So I'll simply repurpose these conveniently color-coded red, green, and blue connectors on the back, disconnect them from the rest of the circuit by cutting the tracks, and removing these components, add a 68 ohm resistor per color channel and connect the wires back to pin 21, 22 and 23. It's a bit crammed on the chip, so I'll connect a bit further on those tracks. I'll keep the video one composite input untouched and use it to inject the composite sync, also called C-Sync signal. Here we go, let's test with a signal generator. If anything goes sideways, I'd rather have it burn than the Amiga. Well, that's interesting. The signal is only partially visible and only over the OSD. Well, this is because of the other signal called fast blanking on pin 24. What it does is creating sort of a mask so the OSD signal doesn't get mixed with the video input. In order to fix this, we'll permanently enable the fast blanking by taking this 5.7 volt reference voltage here add a 1K resistor and inject this down the fast blinking track here. Pretty convenient. Here we go, we now have our image. A quick detour by the service menu to adjust size and position, and we're all set. My camera doesn't give it any justice, but it's extremely sharp, bright and vivid in person. This type of mod can be done on most TVs, you just have to do some homework. I may post another mod soon for another TV. That's it for today, I hope you liked the video and as usual, thanks for watching.